Hi everybody, welcome along. Um, I'm just doing these uh, cooling jackets for the guns on my Fokker E4 wingnut wings. And um, it dawned on me that maybe some people are kind of scared of these or not quite sure how to get them perfectly round. And I know some of the kits come with a former, but this is the way I like to roll brass. Um, I've got a, this kit comes with either the three gun prototype setup or the two guns. So I've done these and I thought, well, I'll show you guys how I, how I do this, how I roll the brass and everything. So what you start off with is this flat photo etch piece of brass like this. It's cut off. I haven't taken too much care um, trimming it up because it's going to get rolled around anyway. So what you need to do first of all is identify which side is going to be out. I will warn you, I do have disgusting fingernails. If you really can't stand them, then please just turn off because I can't do this with gloves on. I'm really sorry. I need to stop buying my nails. I'm 55 years old and I started buying my nails when I was about five, I think. So, yeah, I need to stop. It's going to be difficult, but it's, it's disgusting, I know, and I'm sorry. So, anyway, um, identify which side you're going to roll outwards because you, you notice on the photo which side you've got one side which is sort of plain and flat and featureless and the other side has got the slightly radiused corners and I like to see the radiused corners the radiused edges on the outside so that needs to be down and what I do I start off this was actually a Bovington Tank Museum large eraser for kids and it, I saw this and thought I know what I can use that for so I lay that down like that put this on here and you can start with something large like a hobby knife if you want to and what I'm going to do here is just place the hobby knife over the top keep it square and roll and you can see that as you push down it starts to take the form of the hobby knife and what you need to do is make sure you roll right off the ends what you want to avoid is just doing this you need to roll right off the ends so that the ends get a radius as well so you end up with a radius form like that what you don't want is flats on the end and then what you can do then is take a smaller tool this is a, a, a two a 2.4 millimeter bit and what I can do here is roll it a bit tighter. Okay, now as you can see, what's happening, I'm getting a cone. One end, if you notice, one end is bigger than the other. Yeah, so what I can do then is put it down. The bigger end needs to be rolled more. So I can just put a little bit more pressure on this side and then roll it. Okay, and then you'll get to the point where you don't need to turn the, the drill anymore. You can just push it along. And I'm putting more pressure on the right here to close the right-hand side up. And if you really need to, move it to the edge. And there you go. And now I've gone the other way. So I can push it the other way. And you can basically mess around with it all you like. By pushing it around and rolling it about. And then when you look at this, you can see it's not quite joining. There's a gap there's a gap there and I need it to butt up. You need it to, I need it to sort of overlap so that I can peel it apart and butt the edges together so they stay there ready for soldering or soldering if you're in America. Or I guess Canada says soldering too, I don't know. I'm sure someone can tell me. The other thing is if you start to see it, there we go, I've done this on purpose. If you start to see the ends are stepped, just make sure you've got the drill nice and square. Go over it and you can actually manipulate it and you, you'll get a feel for this as you do it and you can manipulate it back into being a cylinder again there we go now it's still got this gap in it so what i do is i take my no plug here or anything this is a fairly soft sanding stick is a polishing stick actually and what I can do is you can see I'm not twisting the drill I'm just going along the sanding stick and this is one good way of guaranteeing that you get the ends radiused now you can see it's now closed up on this end but not on this end so I'm gonna push down harder on this side And that should now be it. Nope, still needs to close up some more on that side. So push down harder on this side again. 
you can see that I'm, I'm almost on a 30 degree angle now and the, the main thing is is don't be scared of it as long as you don't start squeezing it and pulling it about and putting flats on it you, you can't go wrong really I'm nearly there and some would say if you anneal it first it makes it easier but I think if you anneal it first it makes it too soft and you want some sort of springiness in it and there you go you can see that is pretty much cylindrical but what I want to do I want, I want the ends to stay together so I need to do it a bit tighter this must be like watching paint dry for you guys I'm sorry so I'm pushing down really hard to get it tighter so that the ends overlap there we go see the ends have overlapped now and what I can do is literally put the drill up inside it and just pull it apart so that the ends butt up and that's what I'm saying I've made a spring out of it so the ends have butted up together as you can see there and now I can solder that quite easily so I'll take some flux I may as well do this on this one rather than pause the video and do a load of editing and stuff so I put some more liquid flux on there and if I scream like a girl it's because it hurts I've got my soldering iron set on 300 degrees. I'm just taking a drop of solder there. Why is it not taking this solder? There we go. A little bit too much on there. But as soon as I touch this, it should capillary up. And I can get the iron hot iron on the side. There we go. See it pulling it along, and I can turn it over, grab this end. And what I'm, all I'm using here is the side of the iron. I'm not putting any more solder on. I'm just using the side of the iron to drag the solder along the joint. I'm going to put a little bit more flux on there, I think. It's not very nice stuff that flux so uh, don't go get it all run all over your hands there we go it's gone long now and you can see now that, that is a completely soldered gun barrel or cooling jacket and I can take a fairly fine sanding stick I think what I'll do is hold it on the drill Hold it on the back of the drill like that and I can just gently this is one of the flory um this is the course of fine it's a very fine it's almost like um like a 1500 grit cover that green bit up because it might confuse you and then I can just polish it like that And I can assure you, I have used no particular skill, no fancy products, nothing. Just a bit of experience and learning the hard way. And I've taught myself. And guys, I think you'll agree that that is pretty nice. Without trying to blow my own trumpet. There you go. So... Don't be scared of them it's not difficult it's that easy and remember always put the joint at the bottom if you do end up with too much solder and it gets all blobby you can get something up inside it to sand it just be careful not to put too much sanding effort into the surrounding brass because it'll take no time at all to thin it down to nothing and um, I'm just going to give that another quick polish remember that soldered joint is it's soldered through the joint so you can you can pretty much sand away till all the solder disappears if you want to but I wouldn't recommend it there you go okay just one little last note to finish off these are the actual ones I'm going to be using and as you can see here it's very difficult to get it to completely round go completely round because it's got a much much more metal around the back end than it has on the front so when you try and roll it round you keep getting taper so um, I'm just going to show you that it's okay. What you do is, look at that focus, 
what I'm going to do is solder this joint as it is with the slight rut on it. So I'll put some flux on there and then I'm going to clean the iron, put a blob of solder on the iron like that. That's a bit too much, we'll see, see what happens. There we go, tiny little drop of solder on there. Then I'm going to do the same on the back end. I just want to make sure I've got flux on it. Flux is the king. If you haven't got flux, you will not get a good solder. And the other thing is, I don't know why, but I really, really struggle with solder in the old type Eddard PE when it's got that silver plating on. I think it's nickel, but it should make it easier. And then I've got one of these hard nail nail sticks from um, Tesco's. Fine on one side, coarse on the other. They're, they're absolutely rock hard and they're really good. Like if you're sanding a flat edge, like if I was going to cut this off the sprue and then I want to sand a flat edge without making a dig in it. These are really good for that. I spoke to Phil Florey at the show last week and he's actually going to start doing something like this. Because these are great, but they're not very hard wearing and they're not actually that cheap. So um, you, I don't want to use a sanding stick, a soft stick, because I'll end up putting a radius on and stuff. So I just want to remove that, make most of that lump of solder from there. And I'm using this hard stick so that I don't undercut. Do the same on the back here. Just remove most of that lump. And then what I can do is put the gun barrel back on the sanding stick. Roll it along. I'm not pushing down hardly at all. And then you can see that that hasn't done it enough. In fact, maybe I'll try it on the harder rubber. And you can see that pretty much that's pulled it round. Pretty much. What you can do, I mean, here's one I did earlier. What you can do once you've actually soldered it and sanded it, you can stick it back on the drill and roll it and it will become perfectly round just like that all right guys so thanks for watching if you like this please subscribe um i got lots of little things like this that i do and um i don't particularly like to start shouting you need to buy this you need to buy that you need something else what you do need is a decent solder and iron some of this lovely solder which is um i find amazing for photo etch brass um and just a few simple tools, you know, and don't be tempted with this stuff here. Solder cream, I, I don't know, it's um, you never seem to get a really nice joint like you do with using ordinary solder. I think the stuff I've got has probably gone off to be fair, but if you get some of that solder, a half decent solder iron and a bit of practice, you can't go wrong.